well, just kind of like, no, I said, I'm doing everything. I'm doing cocaine, I'm doing crack, I'm doing it all. And see, a part of me didn't want to have to tell him that part. But I knew it's now or never. It is now or never. The Lord has given me this. This last time was the third chance. Most people don't get a third chance. And I looked at it as three strikes, you're out, a third time a charm. And I preferred to believe it was a charm. And I'm going to hang, I'm going to grab onto this. And I, the funny thing, or not funny thing, but before that night happened, for six months, every time I went to bed, I'd be under the influence of drugs. Um, and every time I went to bed, I would see my mother standing over this grave. Well, it wasn't a grave, it was an open hole shaped like a grave. And every time I woke up, I saw the same thing for like somewhere between three and six months. I kept seeing this hole and my mother standing over it, and I knew it was my grave. And I kept calling out to God, God's got to wake me up. I knew I was an addict. I didn't need to be woke up to that. I didn't even know what it was I was asking. So for about, you know, somewhere between three and six months, I kept calling out, Lord, you got to wake me up. And I'd be getting high. I mean, I'd be smoking pot and cocaine and everything, and I'd be begging God to wake me up. And then one night, I had never called on Jesus before. You know, I knew the story about Jesus and all that, but for whatever reason, you know, I, I was sitting there one night, and I said, I said, Lord, you got to send Jesus to wake me up. And within three weeks, I had had enough. It, that was the night that I attempted the suicide. And what the Lord put on my heart to share with you was the first thing that the Lord woke me up to was that I needed a relationship with Jesus Christ. And the first scripture he gave me to, to bring to you was um, John 14, 6. As Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. Part of my wake-up call was to receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then he showed me the error of my way which was Ephesians 4, 17 through 19. So I tell you this and insist on it in the name of the Lord. You must no longer live as the Gentiles do in, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts, have lost all sensitivity. They have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continental lust for more. And then he showed me in Ephesians 5, 14 through 18, for it is the light that makes everything visible. This is the way, this is why it is said, wake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as the unwise, but as wise, making the most of everything, every opportunity, because of the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. God has shown me, choosing, my, choosing me and my, my way of life was the beginning of um, the self-destruction. Because I literally abused the free will he gave me. I chose me and anything else over God. And look at where it got me. You know, not, you know, I mean, I've heard people say that God does punish this and the other, but I think what he was just doing, what he was doing is he was trying to wake me up that whole time. I mean, he, he made it so painful that I just couldn't take it anymore. And then the, uh, I have two more scriptures, First uh, Peter 1, 13 through 16. So once I realized all the mistakes that I was making, that the choices, like you were talking, James, about choices. It all started with what do I, what am I choosing? You know, I was choosing me, I was choosing my way of living. You try to tell me what to do, I'd run even further the other way, you know. But in First Peter, it says, uh, 1, 13 through 16, Therefore, prepare your minds for action, be self-controlled, set your hope fully on the grace to be given to you, when Jesus Christ is revealed, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as, just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy, because I am holy. And then in Luke, I think it's Luke 29, or Luke 9, 23 through 24, 
this was what I had to do with everything because I ended up over the years having to put God before myself, before my family. My family for a long time, the first three years I was walking with Christ, we actually kind of went like this. But I had to choose who is it that I'm, who I'm going to follow, you know. And till this day, the, if they say something that's not in the Word of God, I'll let them know. I'm sorry, I won't listen to that. That's not in the Word of God. You know, and in Luke, I can't make out what, what scripture this is, if it's 29 or 9. But it's, then Jesus said to them all, if anyone, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. And uh, all I know is that over the years I've been through some struggles in my walk. And over time, I'm just realizing how much more breaking the Lord still needs to do. But I'll tell you, in the last year, I am so grateful because there was times where I didn't know what to pray. And I heard on the Joy FM one time that Jesus was praying over his children before we even wake up. So on those days when I didn't know what to pray, I would ask God to reveal to me what his prayers were for me and any other prayers that he wanted to pray for others. And one of the things he had me over this past year pray for was um, to be willing to be corrected. But wherever I need correction, I welcome it. I welcome it. And um, the past few weeks have been, the past four weeks, he's done a severe, I mean a severe, I don't know how to describe it. All I know is that I was one day influenced by him. Mm -hmm. to come to this church on a Sunday. And I had no idea my pastor knew you guys and all that. And that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I came here, I remember when I walked in, I mean, I walked in and I felt the presence of God louder than life itself. And I was like, yeah, okay. So then when I heard about the codependency thing, that was another area in my life that, that I knew there was an issue there, but I didn't realize how deep. And uh, three months prior, my mentor had prayed for a breaking of old soul ties. I mean, I had no idea what that was, so she explained it. So I told her, well, don't pray over just one person. I want to pray it over the family and everything. Well, since then, it was like within weeks, all of a sudden red flags would go up when I would be in a moment of codependency, where I would have to say no to somebody, but I felt guilty if I said no. And uh, so then I come here and y'all make that announcement and I'm like, oh, I so need to be here. So the Lord brought me here and, and I've learned a lot in the last few weeks and just that first week here, I let go of a 13-year relationship of where, you know, it talks about carrying your own cross. Well, I was trying to carry somebody else's cross for 13 years. And I mean, I, I care about this person deeply. I want nothing more but for him to have Christ and salvation. But I was I was I was carrying a heavy load and just that one night here with that codependency, the Lord spoke to me, I think it was the next day, he spoke to me and I saw the person's face and I thought immediately I was supposed to pray for this person. Well as soon as I got ready to pray the Lord spoke and he said, No, you need to cast him loose from your life. And then two days later, he called me and gave me this really bizarre news, and it was something that I just knew was a lie. And all these years, anytime he would lie, I would just choose to look the other way. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was finally to the point where um, I told him that, you know, I'm sorry if you think that I'm being cold or insensitive. I said, but the Lord's calling me in another direction. And unless you quit lying to me and everyone else and repent and confess from your sin, I said, your salvation is on the line. And that's the last thing I had to say to him, and I haven't heard from him since. But in the past four weeks, by letting that go and, re and releasing it to God, God, it was like a force came in me. And the, two days after that, the Lord told me, I want you to get prepared because I'm going to finish what I started in you. And all I know is I've been so hungry for the Word where I'm spending three, four hours a day in the Word. Amen. 
all I want to do is be who he's called me to be. And, you know, if I could be something more than that, I'd gladly do that too. But, you know, I, I just, I'm just so grateful. The past few weeks, my life is, is, is amazing. And I know there's times that we do struggle in our walk. But I do know one thing is that, um, you know, up until two years ago, I always thought that once saved, always saved. I always thought that too. And then I, I 